Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Asian preview and the North American wrap from your friends at Privateer FX. We've got the cable chart up here. It was a, a typical messy headline pong game, which seems to happen every day. You can see here on the European Open, late Asia, the, uh, cable sold off on some headlines. Um, something came out, I think it was in the Sun, the, the DP, DUP. So they have no plans to, for a call between Foster and May. No deal this week. Uh, this isn't good. May was supposed to go back to the EU as early as today or Thursday. And then there was also a Telegraph article that, and we've heard this in the in the past, that Boris Johnson and Michael Gauvet will lead a cabinet revolt over fears that May is forcing a soft Brexit. The EU wants an agreement this week so they can discuss it at the summit next week. It's looking less likely that they're going to get anything. This could pose some problems. But, you know, with cables selling off, you know, the past couple days, um, I feel like the risk is now to the top side. If, any, uh, if they come to any common ground, I think that uh, there's a good chance we get a, get a rally. Let's take a look and see where this stopped today. The British pound, <clears throat> the third retracement from this 130.40 low up to the 135.50 high. The third retracement was basically today's low. We start getting under these levels, 135.50. I could see this getting back down to 133, the figure. And if not, then the uh, any positive developments, you know, we can retrace some of this and, and maybe half of this back up to 135, 134.50. So keep an eye on uh, on the British pound. Again, it's all, uh, it's just one big headline game. Uh, let's take a look at some of the uh, other charts of interest. Here's the Australian dollar, very weak close. Remember yesterday we had positive uh, data and a uh, what the market perceived as a somewhat uh, upbeat, hawkish RBA. You'd never know it. Got up to 76.30 right before the data and then straight, you know, finished and closed right on the lows. So these lows look vulnerable here, the 7530 area. Uh, this is still my, the short for the next, uh, in the year end, I, I like Aussie lower. I could see this going another couple percent lower. Uh, the market seems long. It doesn't really rally much on hawkish or strong news, and it looks very weak to me. And if the overall dollar has some sort of bid to it, I could see this continuing lower. Uh, Canadian dollar, we had the Bank of Canada today. Uh, some analysts were expecting them to be neutral, and uh, others were thinking that they would be a tad hawkish after their recent um, data, the jobs data. Remember on Friday, here's Friday's bar, huge down move. And uh, it looks like the market was short some dollar CAD still from Friday. And we had a, you know, a, a decent up bar. It was strong all day. And uh, that, that just goes to show that positioning is uh, is definitely short dollar dollar CAD and uh, you know I think the market was when the, when they said that they would raise rates with caution and take kind of a cautious approach that that got the, sh the dollar CAD shorts to cover closed up near the highs you have some resistance up here this 128 figure 10 CAD yen similar CAD strength or sorry, CAD weakness, yen strength. Uh, we have uh, dollar yen was a complete waste of time today. If we take a look at that chart. Uh, pop it in here. It was pretty heavy all day. We did get we get got down and tested. We had some uh, support down at one twelve. The figure it was the two hundred hour moving average, and uh, we closed up at one twelve twenty seven. But it really did nothing throughout our whole session. Euro, just grinding lower all day. Nothing, uh, you know, we've got uh, lower lows, lower highs now for the past couple days. And we do have support coming in around this one. Uh, let's pop up the 240 chart. Comes in at 117. Uh, we had that FIBO here. The next, the next big support level is down here at 117.66. So we, uh, we expect that to continue to grind lower. And uh, last but not least, let's take a look at everyone's favorite cryptocurrency as we approach 
the CBOE's introduction of Bitcoin futures, which I believe starts on the 10th or 11th. Here's an hourly chart. Again, this thing trades well technically. Here's an old high. We broke it. We never looked back at 11,800. Very clean break. We had this one bar here with this this long wick, but never never retested the break. These were the old old all-time highs here. So we got through 12,000, no problem. Let's take a look at this high here. It was right just below uh, 13,000. Took that out here. Straight up 400 points, small pullback, and continued to march higher and closed on the highs of the, of the day, pretty much up at 14,000. So new all-time highs, new all-time high closes. Take a look at the weekly chart. When will this end? At this rate, it'll be 20,000 by the end of the week. And uh, I think next week, once the uh, futures start trading, you know, things could get more interesting there. So anyhow, we've got, uh, as far as data goes in the, uh, in the Asian session, we do have um, the Australian trade balance, and we have uh, a 30-year bond auction out of Japan, nothing major there. And then in, uh, in Europe, we have some industrial production numbers out of Germany. And uh, other than that, pretty, pretty quiet European session. And jobless claims, Canadian IVPMI, and Draghi speaking in, uh, in early New York. That should do it for today. Uh, good luck trading, and we will speak to you on the European Open. Mm -hmm.